See, hybrids are, uh, uh, utilize different technologies. Highly efficient internal combustion engines, along with electric motors that allow them to extend the efficiency in the miles per gallon that you can get as you drive these vehicles. And they're becoming increasingly popular. In fact, there's been about three and a half million of them sold since their introduction into the market in 1999. And the majority of the people who buy hybrids do so because of the increased uh, efficiency that you get from these engines provide a significant economic benefit to them. You pay for less gas, you drive, you get more efficient mileage, you pay for less gas, you save more money. But there's also an environmental benefit to this in the same sense. If you're burning less gas, you're emitting less pollutants into the environment. So I was along the same um, line of logic as I was looking for a vehicle a few years ago. I needed something that was economically viable, that was functionally viable. And I also wanted to be able to sleep at night knowing I wasn't turning the global thermostat up every time I was putting the pedal down. And so I did some research, I investigated some different options, I weighed the pros and cons of what was out there, and made a decision. And here's what I got. I bought a one-ton truck, 7.3 liter diesel engine, 450 horsepower, and a bed large enough to fit a hybrid in the back if the <laughs> occasion should present itself. So no slide of forehead too hard. I, I want to take a few minutes and explain to you why I feel that this truck is greener than a hybrid. You see, one of the problems is that the hybrids burn gasoline in the form of fo uh, and burn fossil fuels. My truck doesn't. See, my truck burns biodiesel. Biodiesel, so you know, is a fuel that's produced from waste vegetable oil. And it's a simple process. It's an economical process. It costs me about $1.20 a gallon to produce this biodiesel. There's some significant environmental benefits to producing biodiesel as well. See, biodiesel burns cleaner than gasoline. About 50% of the particulate matter is emitted from burning biodiesel. About 50% fewer uh, carbon monoxide molecules are released. About 70% fewer hydrocarbons are released into the atmosphere by burning biodiesel. And in and of itself, um, biodiesel has some other benefits. In my mind, I think it smells better. You know, instead of smelling like dead dinosaurs coming out of your tailpipe, it smells more like a barbecue inside of french fries. And it's really hard to sneak up on people, and I do admit I have spent a little more money on fast food. I think it just is a mental thing from smelling french fries all the time. <laughs> In and of itself, so you know, biodiesel is what we term a carbon neutral fuel as well. So carbon neutral is what you see up here. It means that the carbon dioxide and the carbon emissions that leave my tailpipe are equivalent to the amount of carbon that those plants pulled down out of the atmosphere as they grew and then were produced, uh, or were produced into oil that then was produced into biodiesel. See, the, the fuel that is burned in hybrids, fossil fuels, as they burn, that releases new carbon into the atmosphere. Carbon that was sequestered underneath the earth for millions of years. And that's one of the big problems. You know, granted, it does it in a significantly lower amount than your old gas guzzlers did. But you know, don't pat yourself on the back quite yet because there's some other hidden components inside of hybrid engines that you need to be aware of that could cause some environmental damage. The biggest culprit among these is the batteries. So the battery inside of one of the more popular hybrids is a 120 pound nickel metal hydride battery. And it contains 30 pounds of lanthanum, two pounds of neodymium, both rare earth metals. Rare earth metals are actually mined using an open pit mining process, and most of the rare earth metals that we get come from China and Africa, which have significantly reduced environmental standards than we do in the United States or in Europe. So you might be uh, talking, looking and saying, okay, well, let's look at what happens with these metals. So the metals, after we extract them from the mining process, not only is there damage to the environment at that point, but they have to be refined. So we ship them across the ocean to a refining plant that extracts those rare earth metals, ship them back across the ocean, 
to produce the batteries, and then they ship them to the car manufacturer who installs them in the car, who then ships it to various points across the globe where they can be sold. We burned a whole lot of fossil fuels, and we haven't even turned the key on to our car yet. So what about some other options? Because there are other options out there, and there's some advances that have occurred. What about plug-in hybrids, or full electric vehicles? I mean, granted, there's that, still that initial environmental hit with the production of the batteries, but isn't that completely offset by the fact that with an electric vehicle, we're not burning any fossil fuels at all? Well, not quite, because we have to trace the source of the electricity back to its generation. In the United States, about 85% of the electrical energy that we generate is produced using non-renewable resources in the form of fossil fuels or nuclear fuels. And so, um, this is why I love biodiesel. You see, instead of hybrids that burn gas or electric vehicles that run on electricity that can effectively be traced back to fossil fuels or non-renewable resources, the fuel for my vehicle is produced using a clean resource. Your grease is my gas. It's beautiful. I love it. It smells spectacular. It smells like progress to me. And it's a great thing. And as long as you guys keep going to my friend's restaurant and buying fried chicken and fries, I have an unlimited support supply of fuel. And that's great for me. Here's a problem. I ran into a conundrum. And the problem is scalability. Because while I can do this on my own, if we were to look at replacing all of the fossil fuel vehicles on the planet right now with biodiesel, that would require millions of acres of usable farmland to be converted into fuel production facilities. Effectively, what would be, we would be doing is burning our food supply in our vehicles instead of in our tummies. Not economically viable, definitely not environmentally viable. So, Mr. Snow, you might be saying, oh, you just went full circle. What are you talking about here? I thought biodiesel was a solution in your mind. Well, it's part of the solution in my mind. I think it's a bridge to get us there. And I think biodiesel production from waste vegetable oils is a spectacular thing. And what we need to know is that along with this, there are spectacular increases in technology that will satisfy the demand for our transportation needs, which are ever increasing and still contribute to a cleaner environment. Utah State University, for example, has a field of research where they're looking into producing biodiesel from algae. And the biodiesel that they're able to produce from this algae actually has performance characteristics that exceed that of biodiesel produced from waste vegetable oils. There's increases in technology that are, we're able to use for renewable energy resources, solar panels, are becoming more efficient. Wind turbines are becoming more efficient. The price for these is dropping, making it easy for all of us as consumers to now produce our own energy and therefore remove the percentage of fossil fuels that we depend on from the energy grid that we rely on. There's increases in material technology with advanced composites of carbon fiber and Kevlar and the ability to produce those at an ever cheaper and more efficient rate, making our cars lighter and more efficient. Thermodynamic in improvements with ceramics and engines is improving the, the range of our cars and the efficiency of those cars. See, the solutions are out there. They're out there. We can find a solution to these problems, and you guys as students are going to be the ones who discover this. You're going to be the ones who exploit these technologies. Your minds are the ultimate resource for us to conquer this problem. You have ideas. You have great ideas. You need to share these ideas. You need to develop these ideas. Sketch them. Draw them. Test them. Build them. And be persistent. You'll fail. But if you're persistent, there will come a day, I guarantee it, when you come up to me and say, Mr. Snow, Without a doubt, I can guarantee that my car is way greener than your truck. Thanks.